going to cover a very interesting research paper. I think you probably won't find anyone else covering this because it, it's such a uh, unique intersection needed to like understand this paper. But to me, it, it's kind of fascinating because uh, so uh, I studied rhetoric in college, right? And then so like I like part of my background that's what like uh, with rhetoric, and then within that, it's uh, like you study formal logic, um, and then. Formal logic is different than um, like what you think of with regards towards basic logic, right? And I'll get, I'll get into this. Like so, this paper dives into some kind of heady and high level concepts. I'm gonna try to break this down for you as simplistically as I can, uh, and we'll wrap it around the context of this research paper. This research paper is called "Encoding Argumentation Frameworks to Propositional Logic Systems." This is a very interesting research paper to me because it's, it's um, so there is a uh, particular framework with regards uh, towards uh, logic and logic logic encoding called argumentation frameworks. And so this particular framework was invented in the mid 1990s uh, by uh, by Dong. Uh, and this uh, particular um, way to encode um, is uh, so <clears throat> let me take uh, a step back right let me let me first um talk about uh formal logic within this instance i think that's the best place to start is let's get a basic understanding of formal logic uh, and then we'll go into the logic of the paper and then we'll go into the like structure and and uh like the outcome of like actually utilizing it in code uh, and for ai models very specifically so starting off with formal logic as a whole formal logic deals very simplistically with this concept of validity and soundness. And th that's all, like, the, the essence of it can boil down to this, and then it gets, like, a bajillion times more complex than this, right? But so, validity and soundness, validity is straightforward. So, validity equals, it cannot be the case that the premises are true, and yet the conclusion is false. So, uh, is that, like, is it, it uh, structurally sound, right? Is your argument um, actually a, a, a valid proof like do the um, premises follow the conclusion are there is there premise one premise two conclusion or whatever the structure of it is is it structurally valid soundness is is it structurally valid and is it true so it's very possible to have a structurally like valid argument and not have it be true um like a Typical, like the most typical example of a formal logic is Socrates is a man, uh, are all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Conclusion is Socrates is mortal. Uh, and then so that is both a, a valid and a true statement, right? Uh, like everything within that is true. Uh, and then everything within and then that that um, setup is valid. I set uh, two premises the, and then premise uh, one is set up, which premise two follows from premise one, and the conclusion follows directly from premise two and premise one. And so uh, that gives you the overall essence of uh, a formal logic within this. And then taking that a, a step further, we have the introduction of Dung's framework in 1995 of uh, argumentation framework specifically within AI. Um, and then so uh, within that, that, that formal logic that I just went through um, and, and described, um, there's ways to, um, and, and uh, it's been thought of in a lot of different ways. So like, okay, w we take this, these concepts, right? Like um, logic, inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning, soundness and validity, like all of these concepts related to uh, logic overall. Uh, and then it's, so if we could symbolize them and then if we just give a, a, a computer the symbols, then that would be beneficial, right? And, and there's been like, literally since the, the dawn of AI, that, that has been like a, a part of it. <laughs> like if, if uh, it's like a, a always a, a subset of AI that exists, right? Symbolic reasoning. <laughs> and, and then some uh, within that structure and that framework, you have all different types of uh, like uh, 
schools of thought and, and actual programming languages that have been developed. Like Prolog is a big one, uh, a very specific like a programming language, right? And then you have like first order predicate calculus, higher order logic. These are actual like programming languages um, around encoding logic, right? And and those methods that I just described, they're, they're uh, invented in the 1970s. <laughs> and so uh, all these things are patterns if you follow them. And, and so AI had like um, its first big wave in the 1950s uh, and then you know through the 1970s and then it died after that and then there's another big push in the mid 1990s right as as this comes out but then it uh, the reasoning for the failure in the 1990s well in the mid 1990s was uh, not enough compute to support these things overall right so um, you have like I can't state this enough right with if, if you study AI um, research overall and OpenAI flat out admits this like overall themselves right there like everyone is for the most part taking from 1990s research that's why I'm so big on swarm algorithms genetic algorithms etc these are all 1990s concepts and then this concept that I'm, I'm going to introduce to you argumentation frameworks is a 1990s concept and in 2025 this research paper is building on <laughs> that concept right and then so that's what we're going to go formally into today. So starting off with that formal introduction, let's talk about argumentation frameworks. So argumentation frameworks are formal structures used in AI to model reasoning, debate, and conflict resolution and decision making. They allow AI systems to reason about conflicting information, evaluate justifications, and reach defensible conclusions, much like a human debating or deliberating over multiple viewpoints. Like that's the exact point, right? Let's set it up like a, a debate game or, or a debate mindset um, for the AI and we treat arguments like uh, like a debate right um, and then so um, essentially you start off with a, a set of arguments and then these are like abstract entities so propositions claims and beliefs uh, and then you attack the arguments right so a binary attack relation between arguments so if argument a attacks argument b it means a challenge a challenges the acceptability of b is it is valid and sound right um and then so we can write that out formally and then this gives us like a language to write um our argument and then we have an attack relationship to the argument right um and then so we can write it out uh, symbolically with with like code that looks like this um and then so our argument would be that a is attacked attacking B, uh, and then so we, and then in this instance, we have a mutual attack or a mutual conflict oh, where A is attacking B and B is attacking A uh, in that particular instance there, right? So why does this matter in AI overall? Um, argumentation frameworks, actually, they, they're very useful. I think the game theory, all of that, right? So they give systems a way to resolve conflicts between rules, knowledge, or agents that they wouldn't otherwise have. They explain why certain conclusions are justified or rejected. They model dialogues and debate in multi-agent systems, and they handle uncertainty without needing full probability models. <laughs> the, the, again, it's uh, the logic being that, like, um, and 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 the fascination and the dream with these types and and, and these uh, trees of AI is that you can hit like uh, you can fake probability. <laughs> it's like the overall best goal that I can put. Like what the ultimate dream of, is, of, a, of a logician within this would be to uh, understand that you need probability within the model, but to like fake that probability as much as possible, right? Like they want like 99.9% .9 linear and that 0.1% probability to actually be a linear equation <laughs> uh, would be like the dream, right? Is that possible? I don't know. Like I, I don't think so, but like I don't think it's po I think you need like even 1% pure probability within it because uh, it's like the, the special sauce, right? But so uh, going down, like uh, this has like applications, I mean, across the book, like er every form of AI. Um, and then so there's been extensions, right? This is a, a, 90, a framework that was built in the 1990s and then it's been built upon since then. Um, and then what we're going to talk about very specifically is like fuzzy argumentation is so this framework um, with a lot of frameworks and logic overall, uh, when it was first invented, 
is very rigid, right? Uh, and then, uh, especially with computer, and uh, as computers, like the natural first thing is, is rigid rule based, and as we've been talking about formal logic, right, is very rule based, structured, rigid, etc. Which is again the opposite of what we want with an AI, because we we want some probability in there. We just do. We need it in there, right? So how do we best get it in there? Uh, this so we can introduce the through this concept of argumentation frameworks, this concept of fuzzy argumentation, which is what these authors uh, focus on a lot within this. Like, um, so like, it's just inject, like, again, like logic is very rules based, right? Going back to the, the first and, and this, right? Validity and soundness, like this, this is the core of logic. And then so the core of it is built on two very rigid and seemingly irreducible principles, right, of, of validity and soundness. Like there's not a lot of flexibility within that. But so how do we think outside of the box of these and actually add probability to these seemingly 100% deterministic equations. Uh, we do that through fuzzy argumentation, right? So like degrees of acceptance. So, so simple analogy, like uh, imagine a courtroom and then you have arguments, there are claims and, and, and evidence, and then you have attacks, which are cross examinations or objections. And then so semantics decide which of these arguments are actually gonna stand up in court. And then argumentation frameworks let AI play out that courtroom in logic or math and decide what can be justifiably believed. Like uh, this gives the model like game theory with regards towards argumentation programmed heuristically within its its uh, models, very simplistically overall, right? And then so what exactly is the, like uh, this the, the, this particular method, moving on to that, how exactly is that um, advancing what I just talked about, right? So. This notebook is uh, taking on, they create a dung style abstract argumentation framework, but then they're advancing it, utilizing symbolic logic around and various semantics. So they're utilizing, they introduce two concepts within that paper, within the paper. The first is symbolic encodings uh, and then numeric, so uh, three valued equations and fuzzy evaluations, which we'll get into both of these. Um, so within the argumentation uh, framework, how they're introducing their framework here is we have a class of argumentation framework and then the models are uh, argumentations as a system, right? Like uh, simplest way that I can break this down, like it's, it, to me, it's really cool, right? They're, they're, uh, they treat like, so you have within models, nodes and edges, right? Um, they treat nodes and edges as arguments and attacks. That's the sim most simplistic way. Like, I, like not like that's it. That's what they're doing, right? <laughs> they're uh, taking this argumentation framework, uh, and then arguments are a node, attacks are are, are an edge. Cool, right? Uh, and then um, why does that work? Uh, I'll leave that to you. But philosophically, to me, it would only work if via computational universe, as per like uh, Stephen Wolfram, right? But so um, there's that, and then. Second thing that they uh, do within this is a Boolean encodings. So, so like again, like like how, like how do you get? Um how do you change like uh, this like uh, framework of attackers uh, and uh, into uh, nodes and edges? You you utilize Boolean logic, right? Um, and then so they just they're converting essentially like they're it's, it's simplifying the uh, formal language here. And then so that's that's the, the bottom line and the most simplistic way that I can explain here. They're like adding so. This is a symbolic language overall, right? And then all of these, like, so, like, attack frameworks, uh, argumentation frameworks, uh, prologue, higher order calculus, et cetera, they're, they're all just different ways to put um, and symbolize logic, right? And then so this is just adding um, more symbols <laughs> to the logic, but but uh, simplifying the, the symbols that and, and some of the current symbols that currently exist there. Uh, and then the second major, so the, like going into like the kind of the, the, the big major um, innovations that they do here, right? The first is this one within with the three value problem. So uh, three value logic is, is, so in this framework, we have attackers and we have uh, 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 like arguments and attacks right um, this allows for um, more like um, nuance within that so um, like you can have not and or implication and equivalence so again we're adding um, additional symbols right um, and then additional symbols in a symbolic framework like this give us more flexibility so not and or implication and equivalence didn't exist in this uh, framework before and then now they do <laughs> and then so uh, we very simplistically get that um, and then to 
to me, the cool uh, uh, invention here is this uh, fuzzy semantics or equational semantics, right? Uh, and then so again, they're utilizing that Boolean logic. So mathematically, it's a very cool how they like it's. Um, a cool mix of math and philosophy in order to, to get to what they do here, right? But uh, like, um, what they're doing is just uh, like essentially. So uh, within this, uh, like, um, fr the initial framework, right? It's arguments and attackers, and then so that's a deterministic framework. Um, and then so within that, they're allowing for a a, a, a fuzziness to occur, um, a situation where you have uh, no attackers uh, or a situation where you have like no arguments, <laughs> and then um, that in and of itself, and then by introducing that mathematically, introduces fuzziness to the equation. And that's like, I mean, the most simplistic way that I can break that down to you. So really cool, like, it, and it's just, it's a simple addition, right? Like, but logically speaking, it, attached to this framework, it's hard to, to get to that because you have to understand all of these pieces and components that lead up to it. Um, and then so here we're just, and, and then in the code, I'm just demonstrating um, their, their framework here very simplistically, right? Um, and then so uh, very like the, the very first test that I, I do here is just a very simplistic, like uh, as like elementary as I can, um, implementation and, and overview of kind of like uh, the, the, like how this is working and, and, and argumentation of framework. So you can see it here. Um, so you have like, uh, you know, like uh, this is uh, A attacks B, um, and then this is A attacking B, uh, and then this is like the, the universality of that argument, right? So uh, the, the mutual attack, A attacks B, uh, and then B is attacking A. Uh, and then we can see here, uh, this. Is, so what we can do is via their method, it, it allows us to simplify, right? So uh, via a normal, like the, the normal like 1995 version would be this, uh, and then the 2025 version is this. Uh, uh, like, uh, maybe not like the most, uh, <laughs> to you, like, like, uh, crazy advancement ever, but like, this is, I mean, this is like, that's, uh, less than half, right? Like that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> that's super good. Right. That's like o over 50% compression of this equation right here. Right. Um, and then it's a lot, a, a lot simpler expression of this equation. Um, and then so if you get deep into this stuff, like uh, this is cool to you, the, like there's some work to be done in those aspects, right? Like most people might find it kind of boring or, or tedious, but um, if you don't, there's a lot of work to be done in, in those areas. Uh, and then the, um, so pointing out like, and, and highlighting it, like uh, trying to give it, so the second one is a very like, like a, uh, as uh, faithful as I can, implementation of the two frameworks that I described up top, right? So that three-valued semantics and then that fuzzy semantics. And then just introducing those concepts very specifically, uh, and then just introducing them into code, right? And then so I, I, I explained them out, like what, what they are uh, up top. And then so it's just, I mean, here's like, you know, so here's the three-valued semantics, and then here's the fuzzy semantics. Uh, and it's just mad at, like mathematically um, and logically writing out uh, what I described up there, right? And then so this is formal logic, right? That, like this is like this, this right here is is um, where logic meets mathematics. And then so uh, it, to me, like, it, like it, it's, uh, you might want to think if you get into college and you see logic ever as a uh, course that you can take, like a lot of people would get into logic to try to ditch their like math component because you could take logic instead of um, like calculus or algebra or anything along those lines right? and, and then people would find like uh, well like uh, they do they get into this to ditch that and it's like oh like when you get into it it's uh, sure like it, uh, you you can um, sidestep it but when in actuality you need to understand calculus on a deep level geometry uh, etc uh, algebra especially to, to be able to uh, reason through these things right so it's like yeah you're sidestepping it but it assumes that you have have the knowledge that you're sidestepping. So uh, interesting how that works out to me. I'm just pointing that out. Um, but so uh, this uh, notebook completely do whatever you want with it. Uh, open source, MIT licensed, uh, and then like the framework is really cool. I think it's really cool again that we have uh, additions to a now 30 year old framework in 2025, and just highlighting and pointing that out as well. Right? That's like a, a not everything is is a new and novel. Um, and then hopefully though, um, this is something new and novel for you with regards towards formal logic and or argumentation frameworks. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.